Greetings everyone, hey how you doing? It's Matt Sella. Today we are doing a retrospective review for that classic animated Star Wars series simply called Ewoks that has been released on Disney Plus, all two seasons in fact, as requested by Mark. And so, without further ado, Mark, say hello to your fellow fans and Ewok enthusiasts. I am Mark, 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 Mark. I'm not singing in any tune. Oh God, I thought I was over that already. Damn it, Mark, you brought it back. It'll never die. Damn you. Anyway, that's right, folks. We're going to be talking about the Ewoks cartoon show that premiered in, what was it, 1984, 85? 85. Yeah, no, so that's really classic. That was over like 200 years ago. Before the TikToks and the internet and the tumblers and all that other stuff you kids talk about. Exactly. And it should be fun. But before we begin, may I remind you folks, if you enjoy reviews like this, be sure to like this video, subscribe. It really helps support the channel. And as a common plug, I've been doing a lot of animation streams on Saturdays. So be sure to check that out on Twitch. I'll leave links in the description below. Without further ado, Mark, won't you take it away from here? Let the folks know what's the deal with this retrospective review of a series. Oh, well, there's not much to it, really. It was just something fun that for the longest time, this, Droids, and then the Ewoks movies were kind of being petitioned to be on Disney+. Plus. Well, even the 2D animated Clone Wars series, the Gendy one, the, my favorite one, actually, were just kind of swept under the rug a bit by Lucasfilm's current management. People kind of started running speculations. I was like, they're obviously kind of embarrassed by some of this stuff, but also just, you know, we're like, no, this is no longer Star Wars. This is nothing. And it's like, for a lot of people, there was, you know, hey, we never really considered considered this, you know, the gold standard, but you know, it is part of it. It's fun. And you know, now it's here and I'd actually never seen this show. So I thought I'd put it on for the heck of it. And uh, I actually kind of wound up liking it, uh, actually even liking it, maybe even a little more than some of the current Star Wars stuff. And Matt, actually, interestingly enough, had a VHS and there was an interesting little tidbit about it, Matt. You said they strung kind of season one together to kind of make a through narrative, but there were some other little interesting things about that. Yeah, so to kind of insert my opinion on this series real quick, at least the original run of the TV series, is one of the very first things I noticed is that the music is very different than the VHS release, which by the way, that VHS release was called Ewoks and the Haunted Village, which like Mark said, it was a bunch of episodes from season one stitched together to tell like a cohesive story in a way. And I remember watching this series on Disney Plus and I thought, I don't remember the music being this synthy and cheap. So I went on YouTube to kind of look up the VHS, see like maybe if I was missing something. And yeah, no, in 1997, when they released Ewoks in the Haunted Village, this rudimentary episode stitch, they completely redid the music for the show in a way. I was like, huh, I guess George Lucas was always into the whole remastering thing before the other stuff really became mainstream, I suppose. And with that, I think we just blew the lid off the entire Star Wars community here, Matt. The Ewoks is the first and one true original bona fide George Lucas special edition. There you go. That may be true. I don't know. I'm not a diehard Star Wars fan to know for sure. Otherwise, it's a really fun little show. It features Wicket, whose last name is Warwick, which I thought was a nice touch, and his friends Tebow, Latara, and Nisa. Nisa, who is the cheap Chirpa's daughter. Latara, who's just materialistic. And Tebow, who in season one is kind of like this cool, like little druid, maybe a little bit of a stoner dude, but in season two kind of sadly becomes just a bumbling nerd because this series got a little bit reshuffled after originally being the first season anyway, being part of the droids in Ewoks hour on ABC. It's a lot of fun. There's not really much of a connection to the actual Star Wars series until the penultimate episode, which is actually kind of Matt's favorite, especially since season two goes from more, you know, narrative driven stuff to sort of cliche Saturday morning stuff. Apparently there was a lot of butting heads with ABC at the time in terms of what they could and couldn't do. Apparently one episode was even deemed too Star Wars-y by ABC, so they weren't allowed to do it. The whole series was done by Nelvana, a Canadian Canadian uh, animation group I'm sure most of you are familiar with. They're the ones with the logo is the polar bear. And uh, season two wound up having a lot of the production shift more to Lucasfilm and having a lot more control. And you can really kind of see a shift in a change. The Force is also more magical than I think we've seen in any other things, maybe besides the Ewok TV movies. And it kind of is sad originally, especially with this side stuff, George Lucas was more like, oh no, the Force is this mystical thing. But then looking at their views, people are like, the Force isn't just magic. You can't just do that. And it was like, okay, I'll make the Force more serious. Okay, it's this midichlorians, it's in your blood count. But then people are like, the Force isn't scientific, it's magical. I was just like, ah. you kind of then start to 
a feel for George Lucas. But the series also revolves around the Dulocs, these kind of Grinch looking like creatures who live in the swamp and are distant cousins of the Ewoks, all the separate species that try to take the trees from them and destroy them, as well as, at least in season one, a witch named Morag who wants to use the Sun Star Stone to increase her magical power and get revenge on Master Logre, the Ewok shaman who once was her sort of apprentice slash servant. There's some interesting stuff, but Matt, anything you'd like to say as a standout or what you thought, you know, revisiting this series? So as I mentioned before, I was only familiar with the series through the VHS release back in 1997. So watching the show in its actual TV release, it's interesting to see some of the changes, or not the changes, the original depictions that they had. But to get things out of the way first, I think it opened on a rocky start for me because the very first thing that I see when the series starts is that god awful TV intro with the EEE walk spirit of the forest moon thing. And I personally hate it because of how cheap it feels and how tonally it does not match the show at all. And, but whatever, that's just my opinion, whatever. Moving on. To me, the Morag-related episodes felt more serious or grounded to me in a way, despite dealing with magic, whereas any episodes that didn't have to deal with her directly had a little bit more of a afternoon cartoon innocence to it a little bit. I mean, there were a couple of focused episodes that were actually kind of funny to watch, considering how bumbling and lazy they are, but like how evil they can be. I think the first season was really strong for me. I really liked the first season. However, once season two started with the shift of direction and like people taking it over, it was at that point it started to feel very, very not my demographic. <laughs> to say the least. And each episode was starting to be split into two parters instead of a single adventure per episode format to the point where I was like, okay, I kind of get what each episode is going to be like. I think I'm just going to skip this. But I did stick around for that one episode that eventually involved the Galactic Empire, which I actually kind of had a lot of fun with that episode. But strange to me that there wasn't any episodes that actually led up to the events of Return of the Jedi with the whole new Death Star, Luke Skywalker, and the gang on Endor trying to take down the shields thing. I was kind of hoping for something like that, but never came to be. I actually also liked the Jinja circus performers. I thought some of their stuff was fun, especially the voice acting. Season one has really great voice acting for me. Then season two, because of the shift in production, they completely change voice actors for pretty much the whole cast almost. And then, you know, also there's a bunch of characters that are in season one who kind of just get sidelined or just straight up disappear in season two. So it's just very weird and fascinating from a production standpoint. And again, Biases acknowledged the fact that we had Cree Summers voice Nisa in the very first season. I was like, oh, she's like one of the legendary voice actors of all time. I love it. But then when season two rolls around, I was like, wait, that's not Cree. What the hell? That also kind of hurt it for me when that happened. For sure. But on the whole, I think I'd have to say Ewoks, you know, it gets a bad rap and I kind of like it. I think season one's really where you want to go. And then if you wanted to go to the penultimate episode with Ray Rhaegar, you kind of have your more complete package there. There is one weird outlier in season two where it is a full 30 minute episode involving the strangers and all this stuff with the sunstone that is kind of interesting. It kind of feels more like it was a leftover from season one, which I like. But I mean, yeah, on the whole, probably check it out on Disney Plus, probably just do season one and then the Rhaegar episode. And you have a fun little bit of Star Wars history before Star Wars got a little maybe too bogged down by its own success in a way. I think so. Like this show is definitely in innocent enough. In general, I think kids would like it. There's fun to be had, but I say only get really invested in it if you feel like you want that break from life kind of feel, like the classic cartoons of the afternoons or Saturdays. That's definitely the vibe the show goes for, and I think it does that well. Yeah, and for like 1985, the animation's actually pretty impressive. We're still in that weird time frame there where Saturday morning was kind of getting a bit above and beyond, you know, the limited Hanna-Barbera production style, but also I don't think we were quite full Disney afternoon animation quality at that point. It's it's a very interesting point in animation history besides. So I would totally say check it out and, you know, maybe just treat yourself to a little fun time capsule. Don't take it too seriously and kind of just enjoy the ride. Well, yeah, 
<laughs> no, Mark said best. I mean, that's generally our thoughts on the series. Check it out on Disney Plus if you're in the US for sure. But you heard our opinion, but now we want to hear yours. Let us know in the comment section below. Have you seen this show, the Ewoks cartoon series, whether in the original airing date or maybe like the VHS like I did when I was a kid or you're checking it out now, never seen before, and you're like, hey, I like it. I don't like it. Let us know in the comment section below. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, ring that bell to be notified when new videos drop. And if you want to support me directly, consider going to my Patreon, do a one-time donation at my Streamlabs, and consider following me on Twitch to watch me do some animation streams, usually on Saturdays, 1 p.m. Pacific. This is Matt Sella. This is Mark. Thanking you all for tuning in. Thank you.